Welcome to the vlog. <coughs> um, sorry for being tired. Uh, I've had a very busy couple of days shooting blue bells. Uh, you'd have already seen the videos, but this is prior to that. Um, and I was going to go to the same woods again, but the conditions are just not right, so. Plus I wanted to find out uh, what this little secret woods, we're going to call it secret woods. I'm not going to tell anyone or share any uh, locations with images that I take from here because long and short of it is, it's a tiny little location and I want it to myself. <laughs> no, uh, it's, it's a new location and uh, it is a tiny little woods. And it'd just be nice to uh, explore somewhere new. Well, I have seen images from here before, so it's not a secret woods really, but it's a very intimate woodland. It's out the way, we're in a nice bowl, like down in the valley, hills all around. It's very quiet. I've seen three deer this morning, uh, two little ones and a, and a mummy, I think. So uh, I've already learnt something. Um, get my wildlife brain on and the long lens and walk with that when I'm on the way to the woods. I found a nice scene. Obviously I can't go in here because some of it's private land. Uh, so I am respecting the landowner. Um, hence the long lens, but to be fair, it's a long lens shot anyway. Uh, what drew me to this was the, uh, the shape of the tree down there and the shape of the tree in the far distance, but the one in the far distance was lit up. Was, hen hence lodge, uh, lo <laughs> hence was, or well, note was lit up. It's not anymore, the scene is horrendously flat. Uh, but I, th I just, it's such a shame I can't get over just a little bit closer, because there's a lovely tree on the left, even for, which is out of frame, which would be even nicer, um, anyway. It is what it is. So I'm shooting around F11. It's a nice scene. I'm going to take it anyway, and I think maybe I can emphasise the little bit of light down the f in the far distance because it there is a clearing, um, so there is a little bit of light coming from above down, uh, but not directional light like there was. ISO 100, uh, and I'm getting say I could go quarter of a second it's very still nothing's moving there's a lovely little a lovely um a bush on the right with some white blossom on it uh which i'm using on the right to sort of stop the eye creeping off it's a little bit of interest but it's not gonna it's not gonna deter the eye from ending up down down the far distance so yeah it's, it's a nice scene i haven't taken the image yet because like i said i missed the light it's very claggy so i'm I'm hopeful that the sun's going to come back out, but you never quite know. Anyway, I'm going to take this anyway, and then we're going to walk on and explore this, this new little woodland. Uh, and who knows what we might find. So I found a shot. Um, it's incredibly hard to move around here because I'm obviously don't want to stand in the bluebells. Um, so I'm having to sort of follow these little paths. I think they're like animal tracks, or to be honest, I think they are like footprint. There are warning paths that people have used anyway. Um, so yeah, that makes things hard trying to find a composition, or not, or trying to get to a composition you might be able to see with your eye. But I found this tree. Uh, it's like a, it's a dead tree that arcs round. Again, I'm going to struggle to show you because there's not real room for two shots, two tripods here. 
So I'll just talk you through what I'm doing. Um, I think I'm going to be in F11 because I want the background to fall off a little bit because it's very cluttered. Um, and I haven't got great separation in the tree. I could do with a bit of mist or a bit of atmosphere, but there is a little bit down there. It's a little bit of haze. And I've got a nice big hillside which is green, which is a nice offset to the bluebells, the carpet of bluebells I've got in my scene. So you've got colour contrast. The only thing we don't have is a little bit of separation, or as se much separation as I would like. So I've got the 24 to 70 on. And I'm going to be around sort of 50 mil, trying to eliminate that sky. It's going to be hard because I am quite high on a hillside looking across. So I'm going to have to get my tripod nice and high, which is handy for having Nikki. Nikki goes sort of overhead. Um, so in this situation, Nikki's absolutely perfect. Um, there's no need for to use the leveling base. Um, the composition is completely free. ISO 100 and I'm around a fifth of a second. I'm going to try and keep my exposure slightly darker. Obviously I don't want my black, my shadows to go right into black. But yeah, that's the general gist. And I'm just trying to find the right composition. The right mixture of room around the bottom of this tree and sky. I think that's about right. Just getting a little creep of sky in the top top and top side of the frame, but yeah, I'm in two minds with this shot. Two minds. I'll take it anyway, and it would definitely be one to come back to if there was ever misty conditions. This would be awesome. Uh, the shapes and the lines. Obviously, it need it. The bluebells are what make this image really. They definitely complement the tree. So, whether this would work if the bluebells weren't there, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, depends what the vegetation looks like then. Um, obviously, it's the first time I've been to this woods, so I haven't got a clue. But yeah, I'm, this, place is, this place is very hectic. There's a lot going on. Uh, but I tend, you tend to get that sort of feeling from a new location anyway. Right, let's take a shot. So I found another shot. Uh, I actually really like this one. Got three trees on the right, and there's a little indentation where you can see where, like, kind of like one of the paths I was walking down, where the animals or the people have been down before. And then I got three trees in, as a clump. Uh, I should have said that before. The ones on the right are like a clump as well. On the down on the left, and there's another tree that arcs over, and then the hillside in behind. Um, it is quite hazy in behind. There's a little bit of atmosphere down there, a little bit of mist. Um, so I'm in, probably going to shoot this in F8 and just see what depth of field I get. Focus on the three trees nearest to me. I'll try and keep it quite dark. Again, I'm going to shoot my exposure down a little bit just to help. So 13th of a second, ISO 100 F8, two second timer, or in this case a five second timer because I haven't changed. Um, five second timer is probably better for a long lens anyway. And yeah, I'm getting quite a bit of fall off I would say down there. So what I need to do now is give me separation. Uh, but I probably would quite like to have a little bit more depth of field, I would quite like to be able to see them trees a bit more in more of a sharp in more sharpness. So, what I'm going to do is up my f stop to f11 and adjust my exposure to suit because now I'm a little bit dark. So I'm around eight for a second. 
Might just go up a little bit more to F to a six, one sixth of a second. F11, and to see what depth of field that gives me. And that's kind of what I do. Um, unless I'm making a real creative choice, uh, I, I know the range that I want to be in. Obviously, I know the lens now. <laughs> and obviously how depth of field works, but sometimes you don't quite know. It's, it's, good, to, it's good to try out different f-stops and you can see visually see exactly what it does to your image and whether you'd like it or not uh, obviously i know it's going to be a little bit of fall off in focus or sharpness because it is a little bit of mist and haze down there uh, but i still want there to be detail i don't want it to be blurry so let's just check that yeah that's a lot better a lot better, still blurry. I think we're gonna have to go to f16. My favoured f16. This lens is insanely sharp. f16. So now we're around a third of a second. Let's try that. f16 is definitely giving me sharpness down there. Uh, whether it be too too much sharpness, excuse me, everywhere else, probably yes. Uh, we just then have to hope that a little bit of haze we got in and around the background is going to soften that um, and make F16 a usable f-stop. And in my opinion, is there enough haze, enough mist? Possibly not. But either way, I've got three versions of this image. And when I go back to Photoshop, I can pick one. I haven't having to, I'm haven't. i not having to bracket. The sun is high in the sky, but it is. It's, the scene's very flat, so there's a, there's no real need to bracket at all, especially with a camera like this. What I might do now is stick a polarised one and, uh, and just see if I can get something, some of these colours to pop a little bit more. It might cut, cut a little bit of the sheen off the tops of these uh, wet blue bows. Let's stick a polarised one a minute. The beauty of these case magne magnetic polarisers is this is now a polarised one. <laughs> it's that easy. I'm just looking for your viewfinder. I'm going to have to increase my exposure slightly because the polarizer will stop around one and a half, two stops of light. Yeah, I think it helps in a situation like this. It's just, it's just saturating the colours a little bit, it's making them um, them blues pop. And like I said, it is taking a little bit of sheen off, which is quite nice. Um, so now I've got four images uh, <laughs> of the same shot. All right, 0 0.6 seconds now. So I'm getting up to exposures that worry me in the woods. But as it's so still, I'm not particularly worried. Yeah, hope you like the shot. It's quite nice, I think. So I think I'm going to end the video there. Uh, these these woods are incredible. There's so many, there's so many good characters in here. Like. Like this guy behind me, uh, and, and and through that it's, it's like window, it's like this image here. I know there's a shot here somewhere with a tree in behind, using this as a frame. Um, whether I'm in that creative mood at the moment, probably not. But this is going to be a good little project. So what? Long long story long story short, Simon Baxter has really inspired me. I found this little woods. It's like ten minutes from my house. Uh, lots of little private land dotted about with some really nice trees so I was thinking maybe I could knock on his door and just ask if I could get a little bit closer um, 
and kind of do a similar thing to what Simon's done. Uh, which is, it's a really good idea when you think about it. Uh, it gives you opportunity to, to shoot something that maybe some other people can't shoot as well. So, you never know, fingers crossed, S stick around for maybe, uh, maybe a blog post or something. I'm going to try and document the um, this woods as much as I can. Um, but yeah, before I go, I just wanted to talk a little bit about Nikki. Um, for those of you wondering, I've got lots of comments about asking why I'm using Nikki and not uh, Winston. Um, and that is just purely because uh, it's on loan. Um, there's no obligation. Uh, you know, I can say bad things about it. I can say good things about it. Uh, Free Lego thing are very good. Uh, I've used their tripods since day one, um, and they are. I just, I just love, love the whole brand look and the ethos of the company. So yeah, uh, I've got it on loan. Um, I think I'm three weeks in, so I've not got long left with it. Uh, it's a four-section tripod. Um, which is which is a good idea. They do a, a another model which is a three section. I'll put all the details here and the names. Um, but I think the four section is good because it squats down to like 590 mil, which is 10 mil shorter than Winston. Um, it is a little bit heavier. Uh, the, the legs are quite thick and sturdy, but that means that it goes up nice and high with the cap. Obviously, you can see here I'm eye level with the camera on top. I'm able to then drop it down slightly uh, if I'm on a, a gradient, like we talked about earlier. Uh, so that's so that's the reason by, and it's also got a bolt head, um, which is a major draw point for me. I don't use centre columns on my Winston's. I cut the centre column down, so it's a little stubby. Um, uh, so yeah, I don't use I don't use them. So this was this when this came out, it was something I knew I wanted to get my hands on and have a look at. Uh, I just hope they don't have to give it, actually have to give it back, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure I will. But either way, this is, this is a tripod that I think uh, I, I really want in my, as my main tripod, and then maybe I'll uh, get rid of Winston, maybe just to lighten my load a little bit uh, for my vlogging setup. Something that's still got the same height, uh, but just a little bit more compact, so, I'm not, so I can supplement the extra weight I've got here, I can take it away from Winston by using a slightly lighter tripod. So we'll, we'll see, but yeah, I am going to be doing a review video at some point and a written review on my website. Um, but I just thought I'd touch on it now and just let you guys know what was going on. Right, I think I'm going to head off. Uh, I think I'm not in the right frame of mind now. I think I've had a good little walk around, I'm happy. I'm excited about a little project that I'm going to possibly do here, so yeah. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, sorry if it was a little bit disjointed, but these are kind of what these uh, scouting or new location videos are like. Uh, this is the first time I've been here, so you are getting a raw, real situation. This is how I um, go about my business, and it is kind of unusual circumstances with the blue bowers. I can't, like I said earlier, I can't really get around as much as I would like because I do not want to stand on uh, on these beautiful blue bowers. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a good Sunday and I will see you next week and look out for content from here and some more content about me.